In this video, I'm going to cover how you can quit your nine to five job in just six months following these five steps that I used myself when I quit my corporate job. Back in 2015, I did so irresponsibly, but it ended up working out for me in the end as I have been freelance writing for over eight years now. So I'm gonna break it down step by step so that you can consider doing the same, especially since studies have shown freelancers on average, 70% of them make more than their salaried counterparts. And not to mention, you can travel the world while you do it. Before I dive into the meat of this video, first, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Contra, one of my favorite places to find new independent work clients. You guys have seen me post about them a lot. Contra has just launched portfolios by Contra where you can showcase your work samples, background, and rates using customized fonts and colors. You can also access pre-designed templates and themes and connect your custom domain. Contra is a commission-free platform, which means freelancers keep their entire profit. You do not see this anywhere else. You can also send and receive invoices and now access their keyword search feature to filter for the freelancers you want to work with. I am linking below to access portfolios by Contra for just $1 your first month. Since portfolios make or break freelancing transactions, please consider checking this out. Without further ado, it is time to dive in. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be covering freelancing since I believe it is one of the best, most effective ways to leave your nine to five and it requires zero dollars to get started. So there really is no risk incurred and it is also exactly what I did when I quit my job so I can speak on it. Step one, you're going to identify what you want to sell as a freelancer. This might sound crazy at first because our whole lives, we've kind of been pushed into these different lanes and avenues we're supposed to follow for college and then the jobs we get after it. So kind of having this opportunity to do what you want to do and sell what you want to sell is gonna seem funny at first, which is why I recommend grabbing a journal and a pen, obviously, or a quill if you have that, and just start jotting down things that make you happy, things you're passionate about, things you have a background in, things you were possibly doing at your corporate job or still are. Start jotting things down and allow yourself to really have creative license with this and just kind of explore all of the different corners of your brain that have probably been sleeping for a while. After you do this for a couple hours, you might start noticing some groupings. Whatever these groupings are, go on to one of the many free freelancing sites out there and start looking them up. And there's gonna be other people who are already selling it or something similar to it. You're gonna click on their profile and you're gonna start researching them. What are they charging? How are they wording it? What add-ons do they have? You might notice people selling things that you didn't even realize you could be selling. So so for example, there are people selling I will be your virtual friend services on sites like Upwork, Fiverr, and Contra right now. And I know a lot of people who are chatty, happy, love humans type of people that would never in a million years have imagined they could be selling that as a freelancer. So I mean, it really, the sky is the limit when it comes to thinking up what you want to sell. It no longer has to be just designing a logo, although that's obviously a lucrative option. It really can be anything. So give yourself time to kind of explore what it is that makes you happy, what you could be interested in, what you might have a weird amount of experience doing and start sifting around these sites. That's what I did. And it really helped me identify what I was going to sell and it helped me understand how I was going to price myself competitively. Since these are open marketplaces, you can just go right ahead and see what other people are charging for their services and you no longer have to wonder. Step two is you are going to set up these services on at least three different freelancing platforms. I recommend checking out Contra, Fiverr, or Upwork, and LinkedIn to get started. Set up three different services on each one of these platforms. This might take you a Saturday or Sunday if you're working that nine to five and you don't have time to do this during the week. I promise you, you can get this done in an afternoon. I'm gonna link below to my videos that explain how to set up proper freelancing services on any type of freelancing sites so that you can just follow along and get started doing this. A couple key points when setting up freelancing services, make sure you have your picture on everything. Anonymity will kill your business before it even has a chance to take off. You need multiple photos of yourself, different hairstyles if you want, no glasses on so that way people can connect to you. Look in your eyes, smile, seem actually excited. So have your picture everywhere. And of course, have portfolio samples. My favorite place right now to host my portfolio is obviously on Contra because it is easy. Uh, they've given you all these templates and it just looks the most aesthetically pleasing and I'm a sucker for aesthetics. As I mentioned, I will be linking below to my other videos I've already done on this channel that go over everything you need to know about setting up a portfolio, how to get your first orders if you don't have paying clients, and the nuts and bolts of it. And those same people that you looked at in step one where you checked what services they were offering maybe inspired you to offer similar ones, go back to their profiles when you were setting up these services and again, check what they are charging, how much are they offering that for, and just copy it. Don't plagiarize it, of course, but maybe take your five closest competitors, take an average of the price and use that to price your service. This is exactly what I did because that way you just know in the beginning you are gonna be competitive. It doesn't mean down the line you can't raise your price if you wanna have the most expensive service in that category because you think you were 
worth it. You have the testimonials, the reviews, be my guest. But in the beginning, you definitely wanna make sure you are going to be competitive. Step three, you are going to download the apps that correspond to these marketplaces like Fiverr, Upwork, Contra, and LinkedIn. You're gonna put the apps on your phone. This way, when you're at work, when you're at your nine to five right now and you have a five minute break and you usually scroll on Facebook or go on TikTok or somewhere to waste time essentially, you're instead going to open up these apps and that way you're gonna be able to manage client expectations while working a nine to five. So I did this for an entire year in 2015 before I quit my job. I would go onto these apps during lunch, sometimes when I was walking to and from the bathroom, sitting on a bus, sitting on a plane, and I was able to go into the apps and still answer clients. You wanna prioritize people who haven't booked the service yet, so they might be asking you questions about your service. That way you can answer them, assuage their fears, and convince them to buy from you. At the end of the day, you will get more freelancing orders if you are more consistently present on these apps. People can see if you're active on them and they just wanna know that you are available. And even if you are working a full-time nine to five job, they don't need to know that. They just wanna think that they have your undivided attention, even though we are capable of multitasking. So you're gonna dial on these apps to your phone as well as your iPad or laptop to make it really easy for you to interact with these people. Even if you're worried about your main job during the week, I have seen countless times people be able to work a nine to five for eight hours and devote just one to two hours per day to their freelancing business and get it off the ground. Most people double up before they take the plunge. I of course recommend doing this obviously for six months so that you can get a feel for it and identify maybe if you even wanna try selling another type of freelancing service or maybe try another side hustle altogether. Either way, six months is plenty of time to identify if that is right for you. Step four, you are going to save all monotonous tasks, admin work for blocked off periods on the weekends if you are obviously working nine to five, Monday through Friday. So what I mean by that is let's say you haven't sent out your invoices. You're gonna save that for a two hour window on Saturday morning where you do all of your invoicing for the week instead of trying to fit it into your little time blocks you only have available Monday through Friday. And you're gonna use this time blocking system to do everything else, like posting on social media that you are selling these freelancing services. I can't tell you how many people hide that they are doing that when they first get started. And it's at a huge detriment to you because a lot of people you're close with family members are going to be your first clients. And doing free work for these people actually in the beginning is the quickest way to kind of bolster up your portfolio. But of course, they're not gonna know that if you don't let them know that. So for example, on a Saturday, maybe you do invoicing from 8 to 10 a.m. And then from 10 a.m. to noon, you make your social media posts for the rest of the week related to your new business. So that way, let's say it's Monday, 12 p.m., you take your lunch, you've already recorded a TikTok or reel or written out a post for your Facebook page on Saturday that you're gonna post that day. And then that way you don't have to think about it. I use this time blocking strategy to run all of my businesses, even as a full-time entrepreneur. And I honestly can't even explain how much it has increased my productivity while also minimizing procrastination. Because if you sit down and tell yourself you're gonna do a certain amount of work for the entire week and then you're free, you oddly don't procrastinate it as much anymore. It's when you're trying to do the same 14 little tiny things every day, multiple days in a row, that your schedule starts to feel like a nine to five again. So please take advantage of time blocking. Lastly, step five is you are going to brainstorm passive income products that you can start selling off of your website or of course your contra portfolio while you are getting your freelancing business off the ground. So what are these passive income products? Could be selling a Canva template, a PDF download, an ebook, anything that productizes your unique knowledge on whatever it is you're selling. Let's say you're gonna be consulting on a new software that just came out released by OpenAI. You could write an ebook, 5,000 words on it, sell it for $4.99. You could write a downloadable PDF template template, possibly explaining to people how to get started making their own apps using OpenAI. This is just off the top of my head. I have a bunch of different passive income products. I have a book. I used to have a bunch of eBooks. I have online courses and I have digital downloads. This type of money comes to you in your sleep and is a really nice cushion while you're getting started freelancing, especially if you just quit your nine to five, if you're worried that your income is gonna be all over the place. Having these passive income products already set up again before you take the plunge is a very smart thing to do. And if you don't wanna write the eBook or make the downloadable template, guess what? You can hire a freelancer to do it for you. Like I said, please give yourself six months to test this out. I do not want anyone commenting below that I told you to just completely go no and quit your job and now your wife and your kids are staring at you. Six months is a perfect amount of time to test out if you like this, if you like the service you're selling, if you wanna mix it up. I tried three to four different side hustles before I discovered that freelance writing was the one that I wanted to stick with. Of course, back then there weren't YouTube videos like this telling me 
what to do. So it took me a little bit longer to kind of get my groove with it. But now you guys have me, so you don't really need to wait years upon years to understand how to do this effectively the first time. With that, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I have so much more freelancing, financial freedom, and AI content coming your way. Studies have shown that nearly half of the country is now freelancing in some capacity. So if you think this sounds like a crazy idea, it's really not. And I believe more people than ever before in the future are going to jump on this because it makes you good money. You're totally free. Your schedule is flexible and you get to actually do what you want to do for a living. I hope you enjoy my outfit. I've started to dress in a way that is welcoming to the Intergalactic Federation in case the aliens do decide to touch down. I want them to know I'm down with their culture and their fashion. So it's giving Xenon for all the millennials watching this. With that, I believe you guys go out there, go crush your dreams. So much more content coming your way. And let me know what you thought of the video down below. That includes aliens. You're welcome to comment as well. Bye.